Why have this when you could have this? So what we're going to talk about is why the U.S. military kept on adopting this thing and didn't ever move on to that. Well, what are these two things? Well, this is the trapdoor Springfield, and this is a Winchester lever action. Now, when you're looking at the two of them, it would seem to be kind of obvious which one of these is better. This is a single shot rifle. You have to open up the door, put it around, close it, fire it, then open it back up, put a new round in, close it, fire, and repeat. This is a lever action with a tube magazine. What you'll do then is drop a bunch of rounds in through that gate right there and then bang the fire. Bang. Bang. You can do that a bunch of times. This one has a 12 round capacity. Some of the other models in different calibers had a 15. Well, 15 or 12 or whatever these go up to is a whole lot better than one. So why did they stick around with this thing? Let's look at the history of both of these. The predecessor to this came along um, kind of midway through the Civil War into 1860. Um, was 1860 was the official model name, but it was really 1862 that they were out there. Um, and the Union Army did get some of them that they would use, but they didn't keep using them. What they decided to do was take their percussion cap uh, muzzle loading rifles and convert them into these guys. Now that started happening after the Civil War and you had the first early conversions of these in the late 1860s and it was really 1873 where both of these came along. This is a model 1873 and the first of these that were built up brand new to be trapdoors and that conversions from the percussion caps was a model 1873. Although this is 1884, it's mainly just a difference in the sights, not a lot of difference there. So basically you're telling me that both of these are around in 1873. Once again, sounds like this would be the clear winner. Well, let's go over some reasons why they may have thought that this guy would be better. All of these Winchester rifles, um, the original 1860 Henry, 66 to 73 to 76, all of those used a toggle link action, which while pretty ingenious and did manage to make everything in there work really well, was actually a bit weak. It could not hold a full power rifle cartridge to be able to get that action strong enough to be able to do a full power rifle cartridge, you would have to scale the thing up. That is versus this guy here, which takes a big honking cartridge. It took 4570 with either a 405 or 500 grain round coming out of it. That is huge. They were like literally taking buffalo down with these things. So this definitely has the power on it. Um, it's also going to have more distance on it. So these are running full power rifle cartridges. And these are really running pistol cartridges. Especially with the earlier versions, the 1860 Henry uh, with the 44 Henry rim fire. That was a very mild cartridge. Um, like way below a lot of the others, even the 4440 that started coming into the 73 was still, you know, not anywhere near the 4570 that you had coming out of these guys. You did get some 76s that had 4570 in them, but they generally needed to be a, um, a lot smaller load to be able to handle it. Um, they couldn't take those larger, more powerful 4570s. These have a lot of moving parts in them there with the lever. You've got a lot of places that mud could, and dirt could get in there. You could really gum this up and take this guy out of commission um, just with everything that's going on there, or at least that's what the thought on it was. These are really pretty simple. I mean, if this is closed, there's like nowhere for anything to go. 
at all in it there it was just completely sealed up and you're just not going to get much into that at all you could also have cartridges jam you could have a number of things that can mess up the magazine whereas these i mean as long as the door opens on it there's really just not much that can happen with the trap door you had some concerns with a repeating rifle that if you gave a soldier this lever action here and gave them all those rounds that they could fire very very quickly they would just go crazy and just bang 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 fire through that without stopping and thinking about what they're doing and just and they would just end up going through all kinds of ammo and while that sounds a little bit crazy to be worried about how much they were shooting are you you're thinking man they were just so cheap that you know they didn't want to give them enough ammo well it wasn't really about being cheap it was more about um, just not having the supply chain to be able to send a bunch of ammunition out west where they were at there you could legitimately only send so much ammunition out there so there was a reason to be concerned about that you've also got the general cost of these and that is where cost goes into it a bit because these being much much more simple guns were drastically cheaper than these guys um, there was quite a bit of a price difference in these so there was a lot of reason to not want to go to these and so that is a number of reasons why you know you might want to go with this over those but when you look at it those reasons i'm not sure that they all necessarily add up anytime you can look where you can see that you had lever actions going into um, any type of engagement back then um, you look at places where we had some of our guys that had them or in the cases where um, the natives had them um, you can look at the battle of greasy grass or the battle of little bighorn as most of you would know it where all of custer's men had um, the carbine versions of these and the indians had a wide range of uh, firearms a number of them having uh, lever actions out there how being able to put that much fire out there very very rapidly is really just a game changer um, and i think that kind of goes to show um, the real reason that they kept staying on to this and that was that the um, ordinance commission they were just really really stubborn and didn't want to move away from what they knew and understood and liked um, and that was kind of military in general in that point they really didn't want to move away from things that they knew it's like this is how war was this is how it's done we know how that goes we don't want to move away from that and it was really you know world war one when people started changing their minds on it when you had such a drastic shift in technology that they eventually had to adapt you can look at the later versions of these that came along 1886 which was a redesign of the action by john moses browning once that happened they were able to start putting full-size rifle cartridges in these and they got much much more powerful the gap between these on how much power there was really started to go away once you got into the smokeless powder era um, with the model 1892 then you're getting smokeless cartridges in these i mean and it's just really at that point they needed to move away from these much earlier than they did and you can see that once smokeless came out these guys didn't hang around much longer there pretty much as soon as they got a chance um, they started going um, over to um, not the lever actions they went with a bolt action at that point um, the bolt actions had kind of caught on at that point and were looking like the better option there but they eventually finally did decide to move away from it so really it is a good question there how much differently things would have been if they would have moved to um, the lever action much more early than they did um, 
what type of difference that would have made for the U.S. military? Um, and that's a good question, and we can debate about it, but won't ever really know how much. But I do think it would have been quite a different change if they'd have gone for these. And I think it was pretty much just their stubbornness that kept them running along with the trapdoor as long as they did. So if you found this video useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and a like. You can leave me some comments down in the comment section and let me know what you thought about it. You can also subscribe to my channel and click the little bell for notifications to make sure that you catch all the videos that I post and not miss anything. I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G and we'll see you next time.